So later this month, the RX Vega line of cards will launch from AMD, and regardless of whether you're an NVIDIA fan or an AMD fan, you should be hoping for a really strong showing from Team Red here because that will drive competition in the marketplace. Now, the Vega Frontier Edition is already on the market, and it actually caused a little bit of dismay among both AMD fans and the gaming PC market in general because its showing wasn't quite as strong as we had hoped but there may be more hope yet. A recent leak of 3D Mark 11 testing showed that the RX Vega card may actually in fact top the 1080 uh, from Nvidia and may even compete a little bit with the 1080 Ti. But keep in mind this is likely at its base clock settings. So that leak got me thinking a little bit about the RX Vega launch and about how this card may overclock. So I want to give you a few projections today on how the RX Vega cards may overclock and what types of 3D Mark 11 scores we may see from it compared to um, other cards like the 1080 Ti and the uh, GTX 1080. So before we hop into those uh, projections, here is my simple methodology. I looked at a few recent cards that were released by AMD, uh, including the Fury X, the RX 480, and the most recent Frontier Edition. Then I looked at how well those cards actually overclocked and uh, took the difference between the base clock and the final overclock and then averaged that out to find out about how well AMD cards typically overclock and then projected a few different paths for the RX Vega card based on the uh, base clock that was given by the benchmark that was leaked. So essentially in the graph you're going to see a uh, minimum OC which is sort of the if it doesn't overclock very well at all. The average OC is just me taking the overclock from the three cards previously that I looked at and averaging the uh, difference between their overclocks and the base clock and overclocking to that point. And then the maximum OC is sort of the um, probably head in the clouds a little bit but the best case scenario for AMD and how it may perform if you got the maximum OC out of it that you possibly could. So to the benchmarks. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick off this with the uh, just base numbers here for the reference clocks and the fully overclocked versions of these cards. Now for the RX 480, the base clock of a reference 480 is 1120 and the one of the better overclocks I've seen and I believe this came from Jay's two cents was a 480 running at 1475 megahertz the Fury X did not overclock particularly well at all had a base clock of 1050 megahertz and uh, I saw it overclocked as much as about 1150 but I didn't really see anything uh, more than that so I just went with 1150 and then the Vega Frontier Edition, this number came from Gamers Nexus, I believe, I had a uh, reference clock of 1382 megahertz, and then they ran their test and got it stable at 1667 megahertz. Now we move on to the RX Vega card, and the base clock from the benchmark leaked, and by the way, the link to that benchmark will be in the description down below, but the base clock shown is 1630, and we're assuming that this is a stock version of the card, so we're just assuming that that's going to be our base clock. Now, the gray bar here is the Vega Frontier Edition. This was that overclock by Gamers Nexus, which is slightly higher than the base clock of the RX Vega cards. What we're hoping here is that the RX Vega card Cards are not already pushed to their absolute limit at 1630. Hopefully there's still a little bit of room for overclocking, but keep this in mind that the Frontier Edition was not able to be overclocked much more than this, so it is completely possible that this RX Vega SKU will not have a lot of overclocking headroom. I just wanted to throw that out there. That being said, based on past overclocked cards from AMD, the minimum overclock we saw was 100 megahertz, and that was from the Fury X. So that minimum overclock would give us a uh, 1730 megahertz core clock and then we move on to the average OC and that's just averaging out the three overclocks from those three cards I looked at from AMD that would give us a core clock of 1877 and lastly the maximum overclock comes from that RX 480 was the largest overclock we've seen recently from AMD and that would give us a base clock of 1985 after the overclock and now we move to the projections the base clock on the far left is the actual benchmark that we saw and that was a score of 30 31,873. The minimum OC is the score if uh, the actual score is completely scaling perfectly, and that would give us a score of 33,828 for that minimum OC that we saw. 
Uh, the average overclock would be a score of 36,696, and the maximum OC, which I fully believe we will not even see something really that close to it, but it would be 38,815, again, if the score scales perfectly. And finally, we want to take a look at how these scores slot in with the NVIDIA cards. You see that that base clock, again, was the actual benchmark that we saw leaked, does top the 1080 and 1070. My projected minimum OC as well as average OC do also come in between the 1080 and 1080 Ti. And if you are, by some miracle, able to hit that maximum OC number, then it is possible that RX Vega cards could top the 1080 Ti, at least in stock trim. So yeah, the RX Vega cards may actually compete fairly well with the high-end NVIDIA cards, especially if we can get a little bit of an overclock on the Vega cards. But keep in mind that the 1070, 1080, and 1080 Ti in the leaked benchmark also appear to be at stock settings. So those cards actually do overclock fairly well, and that's a known. So it looks like the 1080 Ti, regardless, will still be the king of the hill. That being said, I don't think that AMD has to compete with the 1080 Ti on the super high end. I think it's enough if they compete with the 1070 and 1080 directly at a hopefully more affordable price point, at least once the whole mining craze dies down. And that way gamers have a true choice between Team Green or Team Red in the gaming space. And uh, we actually get some high-end competition um, above what AMD already offers with the mid-tier. So let me know in the comments down below if these projections are encouraging or if the leaked benchmark itself is encouraging to you. And are you willing to go the Team Red route and get a Vega card? Or do you think you're going to wait a little bit longer yet and possibly get a Volta card from NVIDIA? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Those help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They have the same uh, tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.